we know that the inverse operation of square is the square root where if we square the number say 4 we get 4 into 4 16 and now if we want to get the number back from 16 we can square root 16 to find out 4 so this is the inverse operation similarly if the number 4 is cubed that is multiplied with itself 3 times we get the number 64 so here we cube this number and the inverse operation of this cube is called the cube root where we can derive this 4 back from 64 after cube rooting 64. So this is called cube root. So say if you have to find the volume of a cube, then the length of each side or you can say each side measures x units and even the height measures x units. Okay. And the volume given is represented with the letter V. So the volume of this cube is V cubic units. Then what do you write? You can say side into side into side is volume of a cube. So substitute side with x. This is how we can represent this. Now x into x into x, that is multiplying x with it three times, can be written as x cube. This represents multiplying x itself with three times. So x cube is v. Here. So what can I say? v is the cube number of x here v represents a cube number which has the root as x and root over v cubic root over v now cubic root is written this way where over the radical sign we write 3 well this avoids confusion with square root we know square root of 4 can be written like this where this represents the radical sign now, if I want to represent cube root and I use the same, so there will be a confusion and you may write the wrong answer. So, this, can, this when we do cube root has to be written with this 3 here. So, this 3 here represents cube root. So, we can say cube root over v is the number which when cubed gives us v. So, this represents cube root. Now, suppose we have given that the volume of this cube is 27 cubic units. Now, we know that a cube has the same length, breadth and height. So, each side measures the same. So, we can say that if we take each side as say x. So, x into x into x, that is x cube here is equal to 27. Right? Now, which number when multiplied with itself 3 times can be 27? Think about it. Well, with hidden trial method, I think we can get 3. Find out 3 into 3 into 3. You will get 27. So, that means the value of x here is 3. So, x is equal to 3. So, we found out each edge or each side of this cube. Right? So, what can I say? I can say that the cube of 3 is 27. Now, The inverse operation of a cube is what? Cube root. So that means the cube root of 27 is 3. Now, you can you tell me what will be the cube root of 8? Remember this sign along with this 3 represents cube root. So this cube root means 
what number when multiplied with itself three times will give us eight? Well, two into two into two is actually eight. So root over eight, well, cube root over eight gives us two. Well, cube root of eight, will, will it give us minus two? Well, think about it. Minus two into minus two into minus two. What do you get? We know all squares are positive numbers, but all cube numbers may or may not be positive. So minus two when cubed gives us minus eight. So I can say that root over, that is cube root over eight gives me two, but not minus two. That means all cube roots are unique. See, two cube gives us eight, but minus two cube gives us minus eight. So we can say that a square number can have a square root as 2 or minus 2, that is a positive or a negative number, but a cube root is always unique. It will not have both positive or negative numbers as a cube root. Now suppose we found out the cube root of minus 8. We saw that minus 2 when multiplied with itself 3 times or when cube gives us minus 8, so cube root over minus 8 gives us minus 2. Now, how do we find out cube roots? Only by hit and trial method. Well, 8 or 4 or such numbers are smaller numbers. What about larger numbers? How will you find out cube roots of larger numbers? First of all, let's see prime factorization method, which we have already used in square root method also. So let us prime factorize these numbers, say 4, 6 and 10. Do it. 4 can be written as 2 into 2. Well, I could write it easily. You could even find out prime factors. Like this. Similarly, 6 and 10. Find it out. Like this. So these are, these numbers can be represented as a product of prime factors. Now we have prime factorized these numbers. Let us see what do we get as prime factors when we cube this number and find out the prime factors of their cubes. First of all, tell me what are the cubes of 4, 6 and 10? 4 cube is 64, 6 cube is 216 and 10 cube is 1000. Right? 4 cube, 4 into 4 into 4. 6 cube, 6 into 6 into 6. And 10 cube is 10 into 10 into 10. Now factorize these numbers. And tell me what do you get? Let us do one here. See, we get 64 as 2 into 2, into 2, into 2, 2 into 2. Now, similarly, you can find out 216 and 1000 also. Let us see what you get. Similarly, you get these prime factors for 216 and 1000. Well, what can you understand from these highlighted numbers? See, here 2 is 2 times, but here 2 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times. Right? Similarly, if I see here, year 2 is 1, year 2 is 3. And here, 3 is 1 time, but 3 is 3 times over here. Similarly, check for here. 2 is 1 present here. Here it is thrice. And here, 5 is 1. 5 is thrice over here. So I can see that for every number, when cubed, the prime factors become three times of themselves. So what can we say? A number, when it is cubed, prime factor occurs thrice. So similarly, when we have to cube root this number, that is, we have to apply the inverse operation of cube to get the number, what we can do? We can pair the prime factors in groups of three. 
what are we doing? We are just doing the opposite of what is happening in the first. When a number is cubed, the prime factors occur thrice. You can see that. And it is same for all the numbers. And so, when we are cube rooting this, that is, we are finding the inverse operation of a cube to bring back the number, we will just pair the prime factors in groups of three. We are just doing the opposite. So now, let us find out the cube root of this 216. You saw what was the cube root of 216 in the previous example. Let us do this with the prime factorization method. What will we do? Just find out the prime factors of 216 yourself. I can see it is an even number. So it is divisible by 2. Now it becomes a number which is not divisible by 2. So the next prime factor is 3. See, we have found out the prime factors of 216. So let us write this. So 216 can be represented as a product of prime factors. What can you see? Your 2 is occurring thrice, 3 is also occurring thrice. So whenever a number is a perfect cube, the prime factors will always occur in groups of 3. So now to bring back the number from its cube, that, so we have to cube root this number. So what we will do? We will start pairing the prime factors. So root over 216 can be written as groups of prime factors, so grouping these in groups of 3. In cube root, we group them in groups of 3, whereas in square root, we used to group them in groups of 2. Even here you can see 1, 2, 3, 1 group, 1, 2, 3, 1 group. How, how can we write it? We can write it as 2, take 1, 2 out of this group and take 1, 3 out of this group. So this is how we find out cube root. Multiplying 2 and 3, we get 6. So we can say that cube root of 216 is 6. Now if I ask you, is 1728 a perfect cube? Just now I told you that 216 is a perfect cube. So it is having prime factors in groups of 3. So if you want to check any number, whether it is a perfect cube or not, you have to check whether the prime factors occur in groups of 3 or not. Check it for 1728. Let us prime factorize 1728. It is an even number, divisible by 2. See, we have factorized this. Well, even without writing 1728 as a product of these numbers, even from the prime factorization, you can make out whether it is a perfect cube or not. Look at these. See, we have highlighted. This makes one group, that is group of three. This makes one group, again, groups of three. And this makes one group. So two occurs thrice. Again, two occurs thrice. Again, 3 occurs thrice. Now, you could even say that 2 occurs 6 times over here. Why are we taking it as groups of uh, 2 groups, each of 3? Well, because even if numbers occur many times, you always have to group them in 3. So, here 2 occurs 6 times, we have to divide them in groups of 3. Anyhow, so you just divide them in 2 groups. So, we can say that 1728 is these product of these numbers and when we group them we can see they are forming exact three groups no number is left out without any pair 
So we can say 1728 is 2 into 2 into 3, taking out one number from each group, or it is 4, 3, 12. So we are getting the perfect cube root for 1728. This is what we are getting. So root over 1728. So cube root over 1728 is 2 into 2 into 3, that is 12. So we can say that 1728 is a perfect cube. Similarly, for any number, you can check whether it is a perfect cube or not. Well, what would it look like if it would not be a perfect cube? Suppose it was not a perfect cube. 1, 3 could be missing over here. 2, 3's could be missing. 1, 2 could be missing. 2, 2's could be missing. So this 2 would be left behind without any other 2 pair, uh, members of its group. Let's check for this number, say 392. Find out the cube root of 392. So for that, again, you will check whether it is a perfect cube or not. Find out the prime factors of 392. Well, it is an even number, so divisible by 2. Now, this is becomes 49, is not divisible by 3. The next prime factor, 5, not divisible by 5. Why? Because we know there is a simple trick. If the last number is 5 or 0, then only it will be divisible by 5. So 49 is not divisible by 5. The next prime factor, 7. So it is divisible by 7. Well, do you notice something here? This 2 is occurring 3 times, so we can make a group here. But this 7, it has a missing friend over here. To become a group, it needs to have one more 7. So this is missing. So I can say that 392 is not a perfect cube. This is what I was explaining you before. 1728 was a perfect cube. It was having exact 3 groups of numbers which were occurring in pairs of 3. But here, we can make one group, but this group we cannot make. They have a missing 7 over here. So this is not a perfect cube. Well, can you make it a perfect cube? You had learnt in square roots that if a number is not a perfect square, we can either divide or multiply it with a number which is not having a pair to make it a perfect square. What in the case of this thing? In case of cube roots, if a number is not a perfect cube, you can add something here. Well, what do you think? If I give them a friend, say 7, they will happily make a group among themselves of 3. So let me add into 7 with this. 3, 92 into 7. It will give me 2, 7, 4, 4. So what did I do? Along with this, I added into 7 to get this number. So I can say that this number will be a perfect cube. Even without checking, you can say that this number will be a perfect cube. Because in 392, only this into 7 was missing, which I completed it here and made it a perfect cube. So 2744, when divided into prime factors or group of prime factors, I could see it makes one group of 3 and another group of 3 numbers as well. So 2744 is a perfect cube. So this is how you can make a number which is not a perfect cube into a perfect cube that is adding into 7 here. Now if I removed these two 7s, those were already there, then also I could get a perfect cube. Say if I remove these two 7s, so 7 into 7 is 49 and I divide 392 by 49, I would get 8 left. Well, that would be a very less number than 392, but then still that also would become a perfect cube. See, cube rooting 2744, we get 2 into the 7, that is 14. 
So this is how we have created a perfect cube from not a perfect cube.